Hey guys, this is Kimon Beckelis from the Stroke of Brain Aneurysm Center of Long Island. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, I want to talk to you today about mobile stroke units. A lot of publicity uh, when it comes to uh, mobile stroke units. Uh, for short, we call them uh, MSUs. And really what these are are ambulances that are retrofitted to allow the presence of a CAT scan machine inside uh, the ambulance. And also they have the ability to have uh, telecommunication or telestroke capabilities where a neurologist can log in from the distance and examine the patient inside the ambulance. And lastly, they have the ability to administer medications that can break down the clot that's causing the stroke in somebody's brain. Uh, so how do they do that? It's actually a very ingenious idea that, that meant to bring stroke care to the site where the stroke is happening, right? So we all understand stroke is a very time sensitive disease. Time is brain. So the quicker you're able to deliver care in these stroke victims, the higher the chance they will have no deficit or um, the, um, that you know, you'll, you'll prevent life, uh, loss of life. And, and so one of the key components when it comes to stroke as compared to say a heart attack is that we need to know what kind of stroke the patient is having. If somebody's bleeding in their brain, of course, you cannot give them clot busting medications because you're going to make the bleeding worse and it will uh, have catastrophic consequences for the patient. And so it's imperative that you have a CAT scan of somebody's brain before you make a decision for care. And so advances in imaging technology have allowed us to get smaller and smaller CAT scan machines that we then were able to integrate into ambulances uh, and then offer that uh, CT scan right on the field. And so that initial scan is being done when, when the ambulance is picking up this patient that's of course uh, uh, concerning for stroke. Uh, and if that CAT scan is negative for blood, so we're dealing with what we call an ischemic stroke, meaning the type of stroke where there's not enough blood flowing into the brain, then the neurologist who's also remotely connecting to the ambulance and can see the patient and can also examine the patient this neurologist then can make the decision to go ahead and administer the clot busting medicine, either TPA or TNK, to really um, start the clot and, and break down the clot as quickly as possible, bring blood back into the brain and reverse the deficit. Now, for most stroke patients, uh, the trip uh, doesn't stop there. Of course, after you, and, and this needs to happen when the ambulance is stationary, after you obtain the CT, after you examine the patient, and you administer TPA or TNK, after that point, the ambulance has to drive um, to the appropriate location, either a primary stroke center or a comprehensive stroke center, especially in patients with larger blockages where you can um, do procedures through the groin, navigator catheters and wires, and remove those block clots mechanically. That's what's called a mechanical thrombectomy. And so, of course, um, having given the clot busting medication in advance, really increases the chances of full recovery for everybody, even for the patients with large blockages. And then also you have enough information from the scanner and from this ambulance to bring the patient to say a comprehensive stroke center and then continue their care, uh, either through another surgical intervention or through critical care management. So very, very important uh, machines. As an idea, of course, they are excellent. Now like everything the devil's in the details and implementation is really how you make the most out of these devices and so they are amazing when we're dealing with areas that have very low uh, um, number of hospitals right if if uh, the percentage uh, or, or or if the coverage of uh, the area that you're dealing with uh, with with hospital services is low then having a mobile stroke unit is really key uh, and is able to administer that medication on the road. Of course, uh, in an ideal world, we wouldn't want to do, you know, administer dangerous drugs um, in a parking lot, right? We would rather do that in the setting of a hospital where there's monitoring and there's services in case something goes wrong. However, like I said, stroke is a time-sensitive disease. So if you are, say, in rural Wyoming, and we did a video on that uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, if you're in rural Wyoming and there's no other way for you to get the clot busting medicine quickly and you have to travel, say, for an hour or two to go to a hospital, then having a mobile stroke unit is really uh, of paramount importance. But take that in, a, in, a, in an urban setting where you have hospitals all over the place, that might be, to, to some extent, 
counterproductive because then you delay bringing those patients to the definitive care that can be either endovascular or of course um, through medications, but certainly in a more uh, protective setting inside a hospital. And so these are the challenges that, um, uh, that, we're, that we're encountering, uh, trying to identify where these uh, ingenious devices, ingenious machines fit in every single healthcare system. Uh, of course, you know, we, we practice on Long Island and Long Island has uh, its own challenges when it comes to geography. Certainly, it's an extension of the New York metropolitan area and it has a lot of hospital services available. There's two mobile stroke units on Long Island and um, of course, they're offering great services. When it comes to our geography, I would say probably the best use of these services uh, would be uh, on, in, Eastern, uh, in the area of kind of more Eastern Long Island where you have limited hospitals and also prolonged travel times. Uh, and in those cases, you would be able to administer the clot busting medications in an efficient way. Another question that people often have is, you know, what about, what about airlifting these patients, right? What about helicopter transportation? And that's, that's a great idea, of course. The challenges of helicopter transportation, of course, are more so that although they decrease travel times to some extent, they don't necessarily address the fact that a lot of these patients will need TPA or TNK, the clot busting medicine, as quickly as possible. And also, um, and maybe sometimes overlooked, is the fact that uh, helicopter services, uh, although the, the travel time itself is limited, there is there are some delays that have to do with obviously driving the patient to a helipad, loading the patient up to the helicopter, and then the helicopter landing on a helipad, offloading the patient, and often transporting the patient via ambulance to the definitive care hospital. And so there are components at the front end and the back end of helicopter transportation that really add up time. And so at the end of the day, uh, you might not be able to get the full benefit unless, of course, you're in a very, very rural area without a lot of services around. And so in those cases, you can make a substantial impact. But again, mobile stroke units, phenomenal idea, but like always, implementation is key. And so every single area, we need to look at what the needs are and, and place those um, machines at the appropriate location. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you again in another video of the Stroke of Brain Management Center of Long Island.